into the city. It can be a rough ride, said Marina the next night. They were heading out over the bay. A crescent moon hung in the clear sky, and there was only a light breeze. But you shouldn't have too much trouble, even with those stubby wings of yours. Shade's ears shut up indignantly. My wings aren't stubby! Well, they're certainly not as long as mine, Marina said, flying them briefly. He had to admit, they were longer and narrower, but not by so much. It's a simple fact. The longer the wings, the faster you fly. Mine may be a little shorter, Shade said, but they're broader too, and that means I'm more flexible in flight. He remembered his mother telling him this when he was learning to fly. Hmm, Marina said doubtfully. I can even hover, and I can fly through small spaces in the forest. Interesting, but up here in the high seas, speed's the name of the game, my little friend. And in that department, I've got the edge. Little friend? She was as bad as Chinook. He hoped he would regret traveling with her. All I know is I made it through that storm last night, Shaden muttered, and those winds were pretty bad. I can handle it. They'd spent an hour feeding around the island, and Shade had gobbled down his food joylessly. All he could think about was how, every second, his mother and the rest of his colony were moving farther away from him. He was desperate to get going, but he knew he had to eat. He'd need all his strength over the water. As they flew higher, the winds picked up, and Shade felt anxious. Leading the way, Marina's wings billowed impressively with every stroke. Shade grimaced and thought of Chinook. How much higher do we have to go? he asked. A bad afraid of heights. That's a new one. Just wondering why we have to go so high. To find the right slipstream, she explained. I've played around with them. You sometimes get a current blowing inland, and it'll make the ride a whole lot easier. And faster. Oh, right. He didn't like it that she knew more than him. Angling her wings, she circled for a moment, nose twitching. I think we're close. Can you smell it? Shade sniffed too, but couldn't detect anything except the pungent odor of the sea. It took all his attention just to keep level in the strong breeze. Wind soared in his ears. He hoped Marina knew what she was doing. Just a little more. There! And Shade felt it too. The wind lulled and he felt he was being sucked forward. Every wing beat was like two. He looked down and regretted it. The ocean, from up here, was nothing more than rippled blackness. He didn't like being so far from trees. The mainland's dead ahead, see? Marina tilted her chin, pointing. In the distance, Shade saw the thin black line of the coast, and then a tiny but intense flash of light. Darkness again, then another flash. That's the tower, Shade said excitedly. That's where the storm hit. The old lighthouse, I remember it. The humans use it for their boats. It tells them there are rocks ahead and to stir clear. She knows everything, Shade thought. She's bigger, even though she's a girl. Better at flying, better at everything. And there was her band too. So your colony was headed south, right? For a couple of nights, I think. You think? I'm pretty sure. We'll catch them along the coast if we're lucky. Depends on how fast they're going. A couple nights, maybe. So long as you keep us en route, we'll get there eventually. You know the road, right? Shade's stomach felt like he'd just plunged a few hundred feet. Well, he said, my mother sang me a map. You forgotten it? No, he snapped. I remember everything. He wasn't lying, really. He knew he could recall all the sounds and pictures. He just didn't know what they meant. He wished he'd made his mother explain before the storm. Well, that's a relief, muttered Marina. Anyway, we catch him along the coast, right? Marina just grunted. Shade found that the best thing to do was fix his eyes on the flashing lighthouse and will it to draw closer. They talked a little at the outset then less and less, saving their breath. The winds held steady, and Shade knew how lucky they were. The eastern sky was beginning to pale as they reached the mainland, 
and banged around the lighthouse. Shade felt exhausted, but exultant. He'd made it back. Under a top of birch, they found a secret hollow and crawled inside just as the bird's dawn chorus rose from the trees. Instantly, he was asleep. Wake up! Shade popped open an eye and stared blurrily at Marina. She poked him again with her nose. What's wrong? The sun went down half an hour ago. Night already. He felt like hardly any time had passed. He rustled his wings, and a searing ache spread across the muscles in his chest and back. You should have woken me, he groaned. It seemed like you needed to stay pretty bad after last night. Let's get going. Aren't you hungry? Of course he was hungry. But it was like torture, knowing there was a long journey ahead, and wasting all that time catching beetles and mosquitoes. Every second was a dozen lost wing beats. They've got to eat too, you know, Marina told him. He nodded, feeling better. He hadn't thought of that. It looks like you could use it. Are all your silver wings so small? No, they're not, said Shade hotly. I just happen to be a runt. He almost laughed. Runt. That word was such a big and hated part of his life. He never thought he'd use it in offense. Anyway, I bet we're better hunters than your bright wings. <laughs> Think so? She seemed amused. Yeah, just think about it. We're first in tight spaces, like around trees where the mosquitoes are. And our fur is darker, so we're better camouflaged. Any insect who's not blind can see you coming a mile away. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? I bet I catch more mosquitoes than you. First one to hit a thousand. You're on, she said. Go! They scrambled out from under the fallen birch and darted into the air. While Marina struck up through the line, Shade veered through the trees themselves, feeding on dense swarms of mosquitoes, dripping down over small pools of water for newly hatched eggs. He worked out the eggs in his body as he flew. Never had he eaten so much so fast. He streamed past Marina and they shouted out their scores. 625! He hollered. 682! Know it all! He flew faster, twisting and flipping through the air snapping up every mosquito that flickered across his path. A thousand! He bellowed a minute later. I did it! Where are you? What took you so long? Said Marina, hanging from a nearby branch, leisurely grooming her wings. You got a thousand? Mm-hmm. You didn't! A few seconds ago, actually. Well, you didn't say anything, grumbled Shade, landing beside her. You didn't hear me. She burped loudly. You know, I don't feel so good, he said. Serves you right. Me? What about you? It was your idea. Look, I don't feel too jaunty either, Marina admitted. I never want to eat another mosquito in my life. Did they seem unusually spicy to you? She asked. Please don't talk about it. It took a while before their stomach said enough for them to fly. She had felt like he'd swallowed a large stone. Let's call it a tie, said Marina after a while. She had smiled and gave a deafening burp. Sounds fair to me. They kept up a good pace through the night. It was the coldest yet, the grass sparkling with frost. They kept the coastline on their left wing tip. There was a human road snaking along the shore as well, and by now Shade was used to seeing the vehicles race along it. Do you think the humans will help us somehow? Marina asked. That's what my father thought. I've been thinking about the promise, about coming back into the light. Wouldn't we go blind? Only if we stared right at the sun for a long time, Shade said. In the cold night, he remembered its heat, its sheer power. But you just saw a bit of it, right? Well, yeah, but Frida saw all of it. They just don't want us to have it. The other birds and beasts. Know what I think? If we could get the sun, we'd grow. And we wouldn't have to worry about the owls hunting us. We could ask those other silver wings. The males who are banded. He stared at the horizon. If we ever catch up. You said they'd follow the coast for a while. Then what? How do we know when to change course? I could try seeing you the next bit, maybe. Not that he'd been taught, but he thought it was worth a try. He was good at catching echoes. 
It won't work. It won't? Don't she know anything? You're a silver wing. I am a bright wing. Our echoes aren't the same. I'd just be a big mess. So only I can read the map, he said and couldn't stop a grin. He liked that. Something he knew that she didn't. Don't look so cocky about it. You have to explain to me best you can. He called up his mother's sound map. He saw the ocean, the lighthouse, the coastline, and then... Lights, he told Marina. Like stars, only they're not really. And they're down on the ground instead of in the sky. And it's like everything's made of the light. Giant shapes. A city, Marina said simply. She blinked. That was easy. You've been there? Once. We've really got to go there. There was something important in that city. In the midst of all that light. A tower. Higher than the lighthouse. Yes, there's a landmark. We use it to set course. Something to do with the stars and a metal cross. Listen, Marina said suddenly, cutting him off. Shade's ears twitched, strained, and he could hear the unmistakably creaky flutter of wing beats. Not just one set, but many. Come on! With a burst of speed, he soared through the sky until, in the distance, he could see the bats with his echo vision, hundreds of them shimmering out across the tree line. I think it's them, he told her. It must be. I hope they like me, said Marina. How should I introduce myself? Hi, I'm a friend of the bat who got your roost burned down. She had laughed aloud with delight. Hey, hello, he called out at the colony. It's me, Shade. Three bats toward the rear bank and looked back. Shade swept over them eagerly with his echo vision. Yes, the wings were the right shape, the tails, the bodies, a little large, maybe, but... No. He breathed in disappointment as he drew closer. They were grey wings, luxuriously furred, with handsome sideburns on their faces. Even their ears were rimmed with grey fur, and the underside of their forearms, too. Where are you two headed? One of them asked. We're looking for the Silverwing Colony, Shade said. Have you seen them? We came from the northwest. We saw a few other colonies, but not silver wings. Which way were you headed? South down the coast, toward a city. Probably not far ahead of us then. You got lost? Two nights ago, in a storm. <laughs> Bad luck. Well, I don't envy you going to a city. It's not a good place for bats. Look, we're going around the city, but we'll continue south after that. You're free to come with us for a while, if you like. He saw them all up ahead, mothers and fathers flying with their children, veering off quickly to catch food as they went. He glanced at Marina. It was tempting. Flying with a big group? Maybe it wasn't so important to go into the city. Maybe they could stay on course without finding the tower. All at once the graving veered away from them, staring at Marina's forearm. She's bandit, he is to shade. I know, he said. Are you out of your mind? The Grey Wing said, circling from a distance. It's bad luck, very bad luck. She's been touched by humans. Did your mother teach you anything? She would bring doom on all our heads. No, she had said. It's not. You're welcome to travel with us, Silverwing, but not her. She had stared at Grey Wing with the colony of bats in the distance. If she can't come, I'm not coming either. Suit yourself. But I'd watch out for her if I were you. The Grey Wing started back to the colony, and then, on cue from the elder, swung island, swung inland away from the water, away from them. Shade felt heavy with disappointment. His thoughts had leaped ahead of him, imagining his mother. Sorry, said Marina. I forgot to cover the band. I thought they were yours. It doesn't matter, he said. I just don't understand. Why do they think the bands are bad luck? He looked at the silver ring around her forearm, and for the first time, felt a prick of uneasiness. Something must have happened. More than just stories. Maybe you should have gone with them, she said tersely. It's not what I meant. Nothing's stopping you. I'm not leaving. You think I need your company? I'm used to living alone. I don't need you or your colony, Shade. She stared at him, her eyes hard then looked away. 
I'm... Forget it. Maybe there's different kinds of bands, she'd said. Good ones and bad ones. His head ached and his stomach felt queasy. I don't know. And which have I got? Guess I know when I burst into flames. Shade stared at her in alarm, and they both laughed, long and hard, until he felt the tears come to his eyes. But he still couldn't shrug off his anxiety. If only they could reach his colony and get some answers. Sorry they weren't your colony, Marina said. Yeah. We'll catch up. That map of yours is doing the job. Shade smiled gratefully. Ahead of them he could see a ghostly brightening on the horizon, as if the sun were about to rise. Only he knew that wasn't the sun. Here comes the city, said Marina.